we have an awesome opportunity to see a very special spectacle up in the sky coming across North America on April the 8th. I have heard of, of eclipses, you know, as a kid. I never thought I'd see one. And then when I saw it for myself, I understood. I understood what the hype is about. I've always photographed the moon and the sun in different settings. So when the, the eclipse happened in 2017, I was really excited. I, I was learning on, 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 the, on the fly. I kept on asking myself, if I can do this again, how would I do it better? These are made for telescopes and I just rigged it to my camera. It's a solar finder. And so what's really cool about this is you don't have to look at, at, the, at the sun uh, to be able to, to tell what, where the sun is. Um, these two little pinholes, uh, when you line it up with the sun, it'll, it'll cast a light on the back uh, element here. When photographing totality, some of the settings that work for me are, I, I like to have a high aperture. It's going to make things a little bit sharper. Uh, there's, there's not going to be a lot of room for uh, out of focus. F11, uh, F16, I use, in 2017, I used uh, ISO 1250 uh, at 500 of a second. One of the things that I learned in 2017 were some of the key moments during the eclipse. You want to get the beginning, middle, and end. The absolute middle part of the eclipse is what people call the diamond ring effect. It's just a little bit of flare and it looks like a diamond. To get the corona shot, what's really important is you want to have your camera steady. So a tripod um, um, is, is best mainly because you're looking at a very tiny spot in, uh, in the sky.